Good day to you. My name is Merrill Litchfield. I'm a resident of Monarch Landing, and many of you know I worked for the Naperville Fire Department for 31 years. And now I welcome you to Station 6, the last station that I worked at, located at 103rd Street and Route 59. It's not quite far enough south and west to have saguaro cactuses in the front uh, yard, but it is pretty far from here. Looking at the dispatch computer in the engine, this is one of the huge advances in the fire service. You do no longer have to try and strain your ears to see what the dispatcher said. You can see it printed out where you're going and what you expect to see. Now, one of the things I did at Station 6 was I had to learn to drive the engine. So uh, why don't we take a, a few minutes to walk around the fire engine and see what uh, is on it. I already told you that I spent my full-time years working on the ambulance, but it's worthwhile to take a look at a fire engine because the fire engine is the basic working unit, the basic working machine, the basic unit of manpower for the fire department. Now a fire engine is actually driven from two places. Obviously, when they're going down the road, the steering wheel is what they're holding on to. But when you get to where the fire is, the man that drives the engine has to come over here. There's no steering wheel here, but there's lots of knobs and gauges. And one of the biggest things that the engineer has to do is make sure that the guys that went inside with the hose in their hands always have water plenty of water to, to keep the fire off them. And then let me uh, step up here and, and of course the hoses that the guys are going to take into the fire are these hoses that are already connected to the pump, the pre-connected line. There's one, two, and an extra large pre-connected line so that they don't have to waste time when they pull into a building that's on fire they just simply pull the hose that's connected, and as soon as the engineer can send them water, they're ready to go in and hit the fire. The that when you turn the corner, some of your hose could fly off, and you'd have to stop, pick it up, and pack it back. Of course, besides just hoses, you also need a few tools. And the difficulty with any fire engine is trying to decide how few tools you can get away with. Because you need a wide variety, and the temptation is to put on, oh, probably about 125 tools, and then not be able to find the one you want in the mess. This is what we call the engineer's compartment, and it will have the connection, the connecting adapters and such. Two hoses in, one hose out more water, and possibly more pressure. This is made for fighting a fire in the basement. Punch a hole in the floor, connect your hose here, put it down through the floor, and the shower head works on the fire without having to take your own body down those superheated stairs and see if you can get the fire out before you fry. No need to go into a lot of detail on all the different things you need handy. The big fan is for getting smoke blown out of your shovel, for fighting grass fire, and the bar that can clamp itself inside a door, door jam lets us hang the smoke ejector off the ground where the smoke is hanging close. Now we have bigger hoses and the numbers don't add up quite the same. They actually add up to more water. For big, fire, big bodies of fire, we use the two and a half inch hose. Uh, to keep the pump in supply with plenty of water, we use what we call street mains, six inch hose that are just meant, just meant to hook to the hydrant and go to the engine, or to go from one engine to another if the water source is so far away that we need to relay pump. We call them street mains because once you put the water in them, they're too heavy to move. You can't pick them up and shove them around. 
Traffic pylons to warn traffic when we uh, have to work on the street setting. And more specialized contain bags. This one is labeled for water rescue. I don't know anymore what it is that they carry in there, but if somebody's uh, in the water and needs to be pulled out, <coughs> this bag will be pulled out. These are salvage covers. Because we throw a lot of water around inside the house, if some of your furniture isn't in, in immediate danger, we'll try to cover it up if we can find the time to spare as much damage as we possibly can. These on top are rope bags. We used to coil our ropes up so carefully and then wonder why when we tried to throw them or drop them, they always tangled up. We learned something from the mountain climbers. They simply put the rope into a bag and when you throw the bag, the rope pays, pays out as smoothly as, as it went in. So there was one time that we didn't have to stop and wind carefully, and it works. And that's the best part of it all. To the side of the apparatus. The thing is that when they fire up the diesel engine to respond to a call, <coughs> the exhaust that comes out is the filthiest mess you can imagine because the engine's not yet running hot enough to completely burn the f diesel fuel. So we have these ho hoses hooked over our exhaust pipes to catch that beginning sooty exhaust, partly for the health of the firefighters and partly so we don't have to hire somebody to sandblast the interior of the, of the apparatus floor to get it back to something like clean. When the engine starts rolling, this hose rolls with them for a short ways and automatically unhooks as the engine reaches the front door. Let me put it out of the way, and then we can see what's in the compartment. Okay, we have tools for forcible entry. Alligate bar and an axe uh, banded together to make it a single pack. We also have a maul head as opposed to the, the sledge head and the pick head axe. So however we want to chop, we have a choice of what to chop with. Fire extinguishers down below, and one of the crew's personal gear that's working today. One of the changes that came about in the years I was on the fire department, when I very first arrived, excuse me, when I first began running with the fire engines, a lot of the engines only had a back step to stand on. And that's one of the classic images of a firefighter hanging on tight and standing on the back step. The problem is, that's a very unsafe place to ride. And so some firefighters have gotten hurt or killed trying to just cling to a, a piece of apparatus on the way to a fire. Not only did we add safety belts, but we changed how we designed the apparatus so that instead of a back step, we now ride on the side step. So, there's a jump seat here that another firefighter can ride in, but there's one on each side facing backwards with the air pack built into the back of the seat. So as soon as the firefighter dons his gear, gets on board, and sits down, all he has to do is clip the, hook, uh, the web straps of the air pack in place and he's ready to jump off and fight fire. But in the meantime, on the way from the station to the scene of the emergency, the firefighter is much safer, much more likely to go home in one piece the following morning. People at Monarch Landing will ask me, why does the fire truck come when it was an ambulance that was needed? Every fire truck in Naperville has a paramedic on board and a full set of paramedic <coughs> equipment. No stretchers, of course, but if the ambulance should happen to be out of position, say they've just taken a patient to the hospital, the engine can go to the scene and begin treatment until the ambulance can get there. And if the call is an ordinary one, then the engine crew turns over the treatment of the patient to the ambulance crew. There's a fire alarm coming in.
Just get it shot. Oh, okay. Are you going to grab a wheelbarrow? No, yeah, not really. <laughs> Come on, you're good at that. How are you, boss? I used it. Come on, Merle. <laughs> I'm sure you can probably do just fine. Right front seat that I used to be standing next to that just now went on fire call, that's where the officer, the man in charge, sits. He's the one who finds out what they need to do and breaks that down into orders for the men. Thank you for taking this tour with me, visiting the different parts of the Naperville Fire Department. I was proud to be a member for 31 years, and I'm always glad to share some of those experiences.